Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own user-defined function in MATLAB. First, we'll take a look at the syntax of a function. Then we'll work two example problems where I'll show you how to pass input and output arguments to and from a function. Let's get started. Before we head over to MATLAB, let's take a look at the syntax of a function. The first line is known as the function definition line, which begins with the keyword function. Next, we have a comma separated list of the output arguments of the function enclosed in square brackets. On the right hand side, we have a comma separated list of the input arguments to the function enclosed in parentheses. The last item on this line is the name of the function, which will also serve as our file name. Below the function definition line, we have a comment section where we provide a summary of the function as well as a detailed explanation of the input and output arguments. Below the comment section, we have the calculation section where the output arguments are computed based on the values of the input arguments. Our function file ends with the keyword end, and that's it. Let's take a look at our first example problem. Our first example problem has two input arguments and one output argument. The purpose of this function is to calculate the hypotenuse C of a right triangle with side lengths A and B. The two input arguments are side length A and side length B, and the one output argument is the hypotenuse C, where the hypotenuse is computed based on the values of side length A and B in accordance with the Pythagorean theorem. Let's solve this problem in MATLAB. Now that we're in MATLAB, our first step is to open a new function file. On the Home tab, click the plus sign for New, and then Function, which opens a template. The first line is the function definition line, which begins with the keyword function. Next, we have a comma separated list of the output arguments of the function enclosed in square brackets. Our function has one output argument, the hypotenuse C. On the right hand side, we have a comma separated list of the input arguments to the function enclosed in parentheses. Our function has two input arguments, side length A and B. Finally, the last item on this line is the name of the function, which will also serve as our file name. I would like to name this function hypotenuse. But before you name your function, I would recommend that you check to see if a function with that name already exists. To do so, go to the command window and type exist and then the name of the function that you would like to use and click enter. MATLAB returns a value of zero, which indicates false. A function with the name hypotenuse does not currently exist and it's safe to use. Below the function definition line, we have a comment section. The first comment line begins with the name of the function and a summary of the function. This function computes the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And in the detailed explanation, I like to provide a description of the input arguments. This function has two input arguments side lengths A and B. Below the comment section, we have the calculation section where the output arguments are computed based on the values of the input arguments. In this example, the hypotenuse C is computed based on the values of side lengths A and B in accordance with the Pythagorean theorem. So we have one calculation where the hypotenuse C is assigned the value of the square root of side length A squared plus side length B squared. 
Typically, we would add a semicolon at the end of this line to suppress the output to the command window, but I'm going to leave it off briefly to demonstrate something unique about functions later on. Our function file ends with the keyword end, and that's it. Now we're ready to save our file. On the Editor tab, click Save. The function name will auto-populate as the file name, and click Save again. Now that we've saved our function, we should see it located in the current folder on the left-hand side of the screen. If you can't see your function located here, click the Open Folder icon, browse to the folder your function is located in, and select that folder. The reason we want to do this is because MATLAB needs to be able to find the function in its search directory in order to be able to use it. Once you've found your function, if you click it one time on the left-hand side, if you go to the bottom left of the screen in the details view, you'll see the summary that we provided in the first comment line. You can access the summary as well as the detailed explanation in two different ways. If you go to the command window and then type help and then the name of the function, in this case, hypotenuse, and click enter, MATLAB returns the summary as well as the detailed explanation. The second way you can access this information is to go back to the command window type the name of the function, and then an open parentheses. This is where typically we would provide values for the input arguments. But instead, if we click more help, MATLAB will open up a new window, which again provides the summary and detailed explanation that we provided in the comment section. All right, so I'll close this window and let's use our function. Now that we're ready to use our function, we can return to the command window. We'll type the name of the function and then in open parentheses. This time we will provide values for the input arguments, side lengths of three and four. Then we close parentheses and click return. If I scroll up in the command window, we see that we have two outputs after the function call. First, it appears that we have a variable C that has been assigned the value of five, and MATLAB's default answer variable ANS has also been assigned the value of five. Now, this is interesting because if I go to the base workspace on the right-hand side of the screen, I do see MATLAB's default answer variable with a value of five, but what I don't see is the variable C with a value of five. The reason for this is functions store variables locally in their own function workspace that is separate from the base workspace. So variables inside of a function are referred to as local variables. So if I scroll up and go back to the function call, even though I've provided values for the two side lengths, A and B, you'll notice that neither of those values are in the base workspace on the right-hand side, nor is the output for the variable C. Again, functions store variables locally. So why do we have this duplicate output in the command window? The reason for that is if we go back to our function file, we omitted the semicolon at the end of this calculation line, which is why we have this duplicate output. So it is very important to add a semicolon at the end of any calculation lines in a function file to make sure we suppress the output to the command window. To illustrate this, we've added the semicolon I'm going to resave the function file, go back to the command window, and I'm going to repeat the function call by typing in the name of the function and providing values for the input arguments. This time, when I click Enter, 
we have one single output for MATLAB's default answer variable 5. But let's say we don't want to use MATLAB's default answer variable for the output of the function. We'd like to use our own variable. To do so, type the variable name that you would like to use for the function output. In this case, maybe the hypotenuse C still makes sense. So the variable C is assigned the value of, now we have the function call, we type in the name of the function, provide values for the input arguments, and click enter. And this time I see the variable C in the workspace on the right hand side, and it's available for use by other programs. All right, let's take a look at a second example problem with two input arguments as well as two output arguments. Our second example has two input arguments and two output arguments. The purpose of this function is to calculate the area A and volume V of a cylinder of radius R and height H. The two input arguments are the radius R and height H, and the two output arguments are the area A and the volume V, where the area and the volume are computed based on the values of the radius and height. Let's solve this problem in MATLAB. Now that we're back in MATLAB, let's open a new function file. On the Editor tab, click the plus sign for New and then Function, which opens the template. This function has two output arguments, the area A and volume V, as well as two input arguments, the radius r and height h. I'm going to name this function cylinder geometry. On the next line, we'll provide a summary of the function. This line begins with the name of the function. And then we provide a summary. This function computes the area a and volume v of a cylinder. And in the detailed explanation, I'll provide a description of the input arguments. This function has two inputs, radius r and height h. Unlike our previous example, this function has two calculations where the area and volume are computed based on the values of the radius and height. Our first calculation will be for the area A. The area A is assigned the value of 2 times pi times r times h plus 2 times pi times r squared. And I'll add a semicolon at the end of this line to suppress the output to the command window. Our second calculation is for the volume V. The volume is assigned the value of pi times r squared times h. And again, I'll add a semicolon to suppress the output. Our function file ends with the keyword end, and that's it. So we're ready to save our function. On the editor tab, click save. Again, the function name will auto-populate as the file name, and we'll click Save again. Now that we've saved our function, we're ready to use it. To do so, go to the command window, and we will call the function by typing in the name of the function and providing values for the input arguments. I'm going to provide values of 2 and 5 for the radius and height and click enter. Here we get an interesting result. MATLAB returns one output after the function call, even though we have two output arguments. By default, MATLAB will output the value of the first output argument in the function definition line. So the output we have here is for the area. If we would like to get both outputs and assign them to a variable, we can do so by enclosing the variable names in square brackets and separating them by a comma. For example, we could go back to the command window. We'll use the variable A for area and V for volume, 
enclosed in square brackets and separated by a comma. So the first function output will be assigned to the variable a, and the second function output will be assigned to the variable v. So now we call our function and again provide values for the input arguments. And this time when we click enter, we see that we have a output for the variable a as well as for the variable v. Both of these values are being stored in the base workspace on the right hand side. Now another thing that's nice about functions storing variables locally inside of MATLAB is a user of the function can use any variable name that they would like and they don't have to use the variable names used inside of the function file. So let's use alternative variable names for the output arguments as well as use variables for the input arguments. So I'm going to set up a variable for the radius, a variable for the height, and this time I'm going to change the variable names in the function call. So for example, area and volume. Now I call the function by typing in the function name and provide values for the input arguments, but this time I'm going to use the variable names radius, and height. This time when I click enter, we can see that we have our variables being stored in the base workspace on the right hand side with different variable names. All right, that's it. I hope this video provided you with a good introduction to creating your own function in MATLAB. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and would like to see more, subscribe below. If you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a member or check out some of the Spartan Professor merchandise available in my shop. You can find me online and on social media at David Calamus and Spartan Professor.